So imagine you wake up and look out your window where you normally have a great view of Mount Hood, but this time, no mountain. No, not because of clouds. Imagine that you had to pay to see it, like someone blocked it off and you had to pay. What are you talking about? That's crazy. I mean, it's impossible. Well, not really. In fact, back in the 1860s, this actually happened to another natural wonder, Niagara Falls. Uh, is this another one of your crazy conspiracy theories? No, I'm serious. Landowners and private interests were closing off the surrounding land for profit. They literally put up walls so others would have to pay to see the falls. Well, that's not fair. I thought places like Niagara Falls were public property. True, but it wasn't always that way. Early conservation activists, the Free Niagara Movement, helped lead the way to the national parks being held in public trust. Their goal was to keep our common inheritance from being fenced off for the benefit of the few. Let's get back to Mount Hood. Why is this important to us as Oregonians? Well, even if the view of Mount Hood, for example, couldn't literally be blocked off by opportunists like Niagara Falls was, imagine what Portland would be like if skyscrapers were allowed to be built downtown, blocking the iconic view from the Rose Gardens. What do you mean? A little known fact is that the view from the Rose Gardens and the West Hills is protected by city ordinances. These things don't just happen automatically. Imagine if the buildings in downtown LA, Chicago, or even Seattle were erected in downtown Portland. Many of our most cherished views would be lost forever. Good point. But we don't live in LA or Chicago, so problem solved, right? Well, built obstructions aren't the only threats to our view of Mount Hood. Without stewardship of the commons, air pollution can erect another kind of wall. Think of LA again. If we had as much smog as they do, we would lose our view in another way. All right, I see where you're going with this, but how do we avoid these tragedies? Think about what all of these examples have in common. The Free Niagara Movement, building codes to make our city a better place to live for everyone, and pollution reduction measures. They all rely upon vigilant citizen involvement, the willingness to demand that our common inheritances are available to everyone and preserved for future generations. Commoners work together to preserve and revitalize the commons. The commons are forms of wealth we share that must be actively protected and managed for the common good and for future generations. Our commonwealth includes things that are not owned by anyone, such as clean air and water, the internet, scientific knowledge, and cultural legacies. Instead, they are shared by all. Oregon Commons is working to inspire appreciation, stewardship, and advocacy of our Oregon Commons, the gifts of nature and civilization we share across generations. We facilitate learning about the commons, strengthen the network of those who care about the commons, raise the visibility of the commons in the public mind, and plant seeds for stewardship and advocacy of the commons. To learn more, visit www.theoregoncommons.org.